There's been a lot of thought put into why so many children and adolescents appear to be vitamin D deficient. There are a lot of activities indoors that distract children and adolescents, video games, watching television, therefore they're not outside playing and getting sun exposure where they could be making vitamin D in their skin. Um, there are also dietary concerns. Children are not drinking vitamin D fortified milk and instead are consuming flavored waters and soft drinks that contain zero vitamin D. Vitamin D is critically important for the skeleton, as most of us know. Um, it helps the body to efficiently absorb calcium. It leads to strong bones and can prevent fractures. There's new interest and in interesting data that suggests that vitamin D has effects on the immune system. It also affects how cells proliferate normally. Uh, therefore, vitamin D deficiency can cause a for its susceptibility to certain autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, type 1 diabetes, that's a very common disease in children, and also can predispose to certain types of cancer, breast and prostate, for example. We've always known that uh, osteoporosis, there's a direct link between that and vitamin D deficiency as well as rickets in infants and young children. There's new interest in other diseases, um, certain types of cancers as well as autoimmune diseases, um, multiple sclerosis, type 1 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis. Um, there, there's also interesting data linking vitamin D deficiency to depression and certain psychiatric disorders. Over half the skeleton is laid down during the teenage years. So the adolescence is a critical period and a lot of common pediatric diseases develop during that time that can rob a child of what we call the peak bone mass, the highest point where their bone density will ever reach. And there's certain diseases such as anorexia nervosa where adolescent girls lose bone density during that critical period and then when they get better as young adults, they don't seem to get it all back. It's also it's also important for parents to know that during, during the early childhood years there's steady growth and development of the skeleton, so um, it's important to think about bone health across the, the pediatric age spectrum. It's, it's difficult to get vitamin D in the diet. Um, in this country, fortified milk is the most convenient form. Fatty fishes, such as mackerel and salmon, also contain a lot of vitamin D. However, most young children don't enjoy mackerel and salmon. Um, therefore, in, in Boston, especially at our high latitude, it's important for children to get multivitamins that contain vitamin D or a vitamin D supplement. The recommended daily allowance is 400 international units, which I think is a good starting point. Um, the actual recommendation may be, uh, be higher than that. Um, a multivitamin is a good place to start with the 400 IUs of vitamin D and any milk or other um, sources on top of that is even better for the child's skeleton and overall health. There's a great debate between endocrinologists and dermatologists about whether one should get vitamin D from the sun or not. Um, I am definitely a big advocate for sunscreen, however, I think there's almost a phobia about children and adults getting in the sun. Um, for a Caucasian child, 10 minutes a day is what's recommended. That's all a child needs to get their daily dose of vitamin D and then put on sunblock. And I think that's a perfectly reasonable recommendation. In this country, milk is a convenient way to get vitamin D because our milk is vitamin D fortified. A child who's lactose intolerant and therefore can't drink milk, it becomes more problematic. So I really use supplements in those children, either a multivitamin that contains 400 IUs international units of vitamin D, or I use a vitamin D supplement. So there are some foods that 
contain calcium and or vitamin D. So with vitamin D, the latter fatty fishes such as mackerel and salmon contain quite a bit. Um, there are also milk as we've talked about and, and some juices, some forms of orange juice contain calcium and vitamin D. Calcium is actually contained in several vegetables such as broccoli and dark leafy spinach. However, one has to consume large, large quantities to get the sufficient amount for our daily requirements. So breast milk is really the perfect food. It's the healthiest way for a mother to nourish her infant. However, it's, it's insufficient in vitamin D. And we think that's because so many mothers are vitamin D deficient, therefore their breast milk is, is inadequate in that vitamin. So I definitely recommend vitamin D supplementation for all exclusively breastfed infants. So breast milk is really the perfect food. It's the healthiest way for a mother to nourish her infant. However, it's, it's insufficient in vitamin D. And we think that's because so many mothers are vitamin D deficient, therefore their breast milk is, is inadequate in that vitamin. So I definitely recommend vitamin D supplementation for all exclusively breastfed infants. There are a lot of options for vitamins. Vitamins in this country are not regulated by the Food and Drug Administration. Um, for infants, vitamin D is over the counter in drops. Um, and a typical supplementation regimen would be two drops a day and would give a baby sufficient vitamin D. There are also liquid multivitamins for babies that contain adequate vitamin D. Um, for an older child, a multivitamin that has 400 IUs, vitamin D would, would be a great place to start.